And now, Lifestyles Unlimited presents the Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Over the next hour, we unfold your map to financial freedom. You'll learn how to retire through investing in single family and multifamily real estate. You'll learn how to create cash flow and build wealth so you can have the time and money to live the lifestyle you want. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Today's show, I have Brandon on with me, and today we're going to get into his mind. You're going to find out how somebody at the age of 33 was able to retire himself with real estate. Now, here's the beautiful thing. He's, he's a little bit older than 33 now. He's been retired for the last six years. He hasn't crested 40 yet. He's getting close, but he's not there yet. So why should you listen to the wisdom of somebody in their 30s? Well, here's why. Because he listened to the wisdom of our founder and CEO, Del Wamsley at Lifestyles Unlimited, and he did exactly what we told him to do. He started buying single family assets, and then he started buying into multifamily assets, and today he's actually a lead investor. He was able to retire himself six years ago. Can you say that? Were you able to retire yourself six years ago? Chances are you weren't able to do that. Unless, of course, you're one of the Lifestyles Unlimited members listening to the show, in which case we welcome you guys back. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring Brandon onto the show because I want to get into his mind. I want you to understand why he made the decisions that he made in his early 30s. Brandon, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. So did I get any of that wrong? I mean, is it true? Did you retire at the age of 33? Yes, that's when I left Corporateville, yes. So did they, they fire you and you just became homeless? How did you, how did you, how did you retire yourself? Um, so it was an interesting way that I left my corporate job. Uh, I, was, I was in Corporateville for about 10 years, oil and gas, uh, corporate oil and gas. And um, the division that I was working for was behind the scenes being sold off. Um, so they, they, and I didn't know this at the time, they handpicked, you know, some of their best employees to kind of be traded to the new company. So they laid me off and then offered me a job two days later at the new company. Um, and at the time, I had quite a bit of real estate assets. And I said, well, you know, I don't, I don't need to do this anymore. So I, I declined your trade. Uh, I'm just going to do uh, real estate full time, and and I probably wouldn't have decided to do that at that time if they didn't uh, didn't do that to me. So it almost sounds like corporate America is like the NFL, like they're they're trading bodies. I mean, is that really what they do in corporate America? I've never seen them do that before, so I was very shocked at that, especially to, to get laid off for being good at your job as opposed to being bad at it. Um, so yeah, very very surprised at that. Yeah, I thought you were talking about the government when you said getting laid off for being good at your job. You know, I'm just <laughs> just picking on government a little bit because we're going to have some fun today, Brandon. So let me take you all the way back to the beginning. You went to school at a prestigious college. Where did you go to school? Uh, Texas A&M. So you're an Aggie. Gig'em. Gig'em. <laughs> I was waiting for it. You were a little slow there. You were a little slow. We, we, we'll we work on that throughout the show, though. got too much trouble for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so like me, I'm a lot older than you are, by the way. But like me, I think you were told the same thing. Go to school, get good grades, get into a good college, get good grades, and then get into a job and trade time for money for a long period of time. What exactly what you, were you taught when you went through this process? Well, they sold it a little bit more positive than that in college. Now, when I, when I graduated and, and got my first job in corporate oil and gas, um, I was a bit shocked at how it actually was. It wasn't all that professional. Uh, it was very political, and uh, I mean, it, it, people trying to stab you in the back every which way. And being a good performer didn't mean that you got raises or promotions. You had to be a schemer. Uh, so I was immediately disappointed in, in the corporate infrastructure, and I, I immediately was trying to find a way to not do it anymore. But it, it was the only way I knew how to make money. So they, they sold you on this concept that you need to do that oil and gas job for a long period of time, did they not? Forever almost, yeah. So I'm 65, and I didn't want to retire when I was 65 when I couldn't do any physical activities anymore. I like to do 
physical activities, outdoor activities. And if I waited until I was 65, I might not be able to do any of them. So you, you rejected their conventional wisdom, and you rejected it based on the fact you were listening to Del Wamsley about seven years ago, maybe eight years ago. I, my math isn't great. It doesn't really matter. But the point is, Del Wamsley said something to you that resonated with you. Do you, do you recall what his messaging was? Sure. Yeah, I've rejected it before I found him, and I was looking for other things to do as well. I was trying to do, and went through a whole list of things, you know, maybe thought about buying a subway or something like that, internet, internet jobs, day trading. Uh, and then I found, um, you know, the Del Wamsley show on uh, uh, when I was taking my lunch breaks, and um, I figured out that you could buy, I always wanted to buy houses, but I was kind of uh, turned away from it by some previous people that didn't, weren't very successful with it. And he showed me how to do it on the radio uh, successfully. And I did the numbers and it made complete sense. And I finally found a plan that met my criteria of retirement. You had bought a duplex. And if I remember correctly, that duplex was cash flowing about $1,200 a month. Did I get that right? Yeah, it was a 1200 a month, yeah. That's that's some serious cash flow. I mean, if you annualize that, you're looking at like what a fourteen thousand four hundred dollar a year income stream. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. So, I'm going to ask a personal question, and, and if it's too personal, feel free to defer the question back to me. But how much were you earning per year in oil and gas at that time? Do you recall? I uh, probably I'm not, okay. So I moved to my new uh, position. Uh, I was making a hundred thousand a year. Okay, and and just by buying this duplex, you gave yourself a fourteen thousand dollar raise. You essentially gave yourself a a fourteen percent raise. Would that be correct? Yeah, that's that's about right. When's the last time the oil and gas guys went out of their way to give you a fourteen thousand dollar a year raise? I, I never got one that high. Uh, nah. If you were the highest performer, you, know, you got a 4% raise. You took the bull by the horns, and you took control of your own destiny. You, weren't, you, were, you were probably at that point very tired of the, the corporate politics, the, the corporate nonsense, and you had already mentioned on the show that you, you were done. You were ready for a change. You listened to Dell. Dell gave you very specific guidance about how to buy real estate. You not only bought a, a duplex, but you bought a single family property. Is that correct? Yes. And you hadn't even become a member of Lifestyles Unlimited yet. No, I didn't. I, I, I did those two purchases in like six months. And then a, couple, a month later, I joined Lifestyles. Okay. So why, why the catalyst for joining Lifestyles? I mean, we, we taught you over the radio. We gave you everything you needed. What was it about joining Lifestyles Unlimited that you felt was necessary? You know, I'm not so sure that I didn't want to join it before. I just wanted to test it out first. Um, and after I had bought those two, you know, I was making 1200 on the first one, and I was the ghost. I was making about 600 on the house because I bought it in cash. It was like $40,000 house. Um, so I was making, you know, like $1,800 a month. I was like, obviously the plan that he laid out on the radio was true. Um, I didn't think it'd be that good, actually. Uh, so I, I said, if he gave me this information on the radio, I probably should go get the information, more information from him in person. He can, and I wanted to buy more houses, too. So I said, well, I need some support, you know. I'm going to start spending a lot of money on this, and I'm making a lot. Of, we're dealing with big numbers now. I might as well spend a little money to get educated and and do it the best way, right? Well, I, I'd agree with you because I, I I was the same way. I I listened to the the Del Wamsley radio show and the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, and they were the only shows that were real estate related that were actually talking about things of sub substance. I mean, I was getting information, real time information about markets, and and everything else seemed to just be very superfluous. Were, were you feeling that way? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I, that's why I listened to the ra the radio show so much is because you could go and you could verify everything he was saying, like you know, on Zillow or something like that, and you know, all the other ones. It's, it didn't seem like there wasn't like a real good plan to like to do any of it. You know, it, it, it all seemed like a you know just marketing to get you to spend money on something. That, you know, other shows like day trading shows and stuff like that. But. 
Yeah, I'd agree with you there. I mean, I felt the same way. So you you joined Lifestyles Unlimited, and you like everybody else that joins. You went to the sixteen hour training. Did did they teach you anything in the sixteen hours that you hadn't already learned just by listening to the radio? Uh, absolutely, I learned uh, a countless amount of things about you know single family properties and how I could do things better. Um, and then I learned. Um, which I wasn't even planning on learning about was apartment buying. I didn't even think that uh, a person could buy an apartment. I thought that was just corporations that own those. Um, and how you increase values on, on apartments and stuff like that, that was pretty, uh, that was pretty groundbreaking. I, was, I, I went in wanting to buy more houses, and then I came out wanting to buy an apartment. Well, it's, that, that's a radical change. I mean, I bet you, you, you didn't even see that coming, did you? I, I didn't. But Dell said, "Do you want to be a millionaire or not?" I said, "Yes, I do." So, at at that moment in the two day, you changed your investing strategy. You moved away from single family, even though you had great experience with single family. You you chose the multifamily route. What specifically about multifamily drew you away from single family? Well, you know, you have to remember, I bought properties in pretty rough neighborhoods, so I wasn't. I didn't know if I had to keep doing that or not. Um, and, and the idea of having 10 houses in different neighborhoods, maybe all of them were bad neighborhoods, was kind of scary to me and it seemed time consuming to manage all that. So I, you know, put them all in one spot. It seemed like a logical uh, solution to that. And then you can manage them all, you know, more effectively. So all this happened in, in 2015. You become a member. You decide you're going to start investing passively in other members' deals. And at that time, you also made a decision to, to start a business, did you not? Uh, yeah, so my wife started, kind of started her business while, um, before I even got into that business. Later, I got into the business a bit. But my wife uh, has worked for a family company for a while, and, and she wanted to start a business for, for a her whole career where she wanted to. So she started her business um, before I even exited Corporateville. Um, so, yeah, and then the passive stuff. I, I actually started, I wanted to buy a small one, by apartment by myself, you know, 10, 15 units. I was still working full-time at the time, so it was kind of time-consuming and difficult to find that while I was working. Um, so I eventually kind of got tired of that. I said, I need to put my money somewhere because I raised money. I raised my own cash and it's just sitting in the bank account. And I said, all right, well, it's just in the meantime, we'll keep making our salary and put some money in some of these passive investments. So we did that for a little while. Did, did you ever return to single family investing? I did. And I, so I made really good returns on my first two, uh, my duplex and my single family. And the passives, they're passive. That's really good that they're passive, but they don't make as good as returns if you buy single family or do things yourself. So I kind of said, all right, I want to get back into making those big returns, you know, 25, 35 plus percent annualized returns. So I, I broke back into single family after we purchased a bunch of multi, uh, passive multifamilies. Yeah, I, I found the same result. I mean, if you're investing in single family properties, you've, you've got a little more control than is if you're a passive investor. And the cash flows, they, they, they're a little bit nicer, are they not? Uh, every house that I've ever bought has just been fantastic. Just a cash cow, just paying you money. All right, we're going to break. Brandon, when we come back, we're going to talk about your decision to become a lead investor. This is very important. Stick around. Got questions? Call Lifestyles Unlimited at 855-497-4335. The Real Estate Investor Radio Show continues next. There is a dream killer here somewhere today. You're going to run into somebody that's going to tell you this stuff doesn't work. Like Vinette said, it's a scam. This is probably a multi-level marketing program. Somebody is going to tell you it doesn't work because you're the wrong race, the wrong age, the wrong sex, the wrong sexual preference, the something or other. And this is all set up so rich people can be successful and all you poor people can't. And if you believe that, they've won. 
But if you don't, you win. Don't believe the dream killers? Start winning today with a Lifestyles Unlimited free workshop. Get the knowledge you need to replace your income in two to five years, and then find out how to take action. Register for the free online workshop at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Creating the lifestyle you've always wanted. You're hearing Lifestyles Unlimited's Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome back to the second half of the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. My name is Al Gordon, and I have Brandon on with me today. Together, we're working on your financial freedom. So, Brandon, as we went to break, we were talking about all of the real estate that you had invested in since becoming a member. You bought some single family properties, then you decided to invest passively into multifamily properties. You you moved back into single family to take advantage of their superior cash flow. And I, I totally get it. I understand why. But then in 2020, you made a change. You made a decision to become a lead investor. Can can you tell me what that role is and why you chose to do it? Sure, sure. So, lead investor is you know lifestyle's way of saying a syndicator. So we we go out and we meet other people who want to invest in properties, and we raise the money from them. They don't do much work. They give us the money, and then uh, the lead investor uh, just uh, finds the property, purchases the property, runs the property, and distributes money back to those uh, to those passive investors. So I wanted I wanted to do that because. Um, Single family, you know, I'd already gotten four or five of these under my belt. I wanted to buy some multifamily. Um, the best way to get a larger property is to help uh, to bring more cash in from other people because I just didn't have the cash to buy big properties. Um, so that's kind of why we, I always kind of wanted to do multifamily. Um, it seems a bit scarier, riskier, if you will. Um, but uh, I, I felt like I had enough experience that it was time to go ahead and do that. So what did you buy for your first asset? Tell me about the asset and tell me what you did with it. So we found it took us about a year from when we started looking or, or when we started building up our team to do the, to do the lead role. Um, we found a 16 unit in Conroe, Texas. Um, it was right, but we put an offer in on that right before COVID was even a thing. Uh, nobody had even heard of Wuhan before. Uh, we put our offer in, and then by the time we closed on that, it, the world had fallen apart. Um, we'd already gone through the lockdown, and the stock market crashed. Uh, so it was an interesting time. Uh, we ended up uh, closing on it. No, we had a few issues closing, but we closed on it, and we uh, started operating uh, in a post-COVID environment. So you you bought property right before the, the pandemic. Did, did you have the sinking feeling in your stomach that maybe you had made a mistake? I thought the deal was fantastic throughout the whole thing. Now, it was a little bit more difficult to convince the investors that I needed that because um, they were scared. Uh, they were scared to know what was going to happen. They thought they might, maybe they might die. You know, um, Their money in their stock market was already down 30% or something like that, so they were afraid to take the money out. Uh, but I always thought the deal was fantastic, and I wasn't worried about it personally, no. And, and the one thing that we learned through the pandemic was that everybody needed a place to live. So, I mean, you actually bought the best type of asset possible going into a pandemic. At least that's my opinion. Yeah, until the government started deciding that we didn't need to be paid anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, yeah, the government, you know, the government does whatever the government does. They're not very efficient, are they? No, we operated it just fine. We kind of uh, delayed our plans a bit. You know, you didn't want to. It was it was considered uh, frowned upon to start raising rents in the middle of uh, the pandemic, so we we paused for you know nine months to a year, and we just made sure that we uh, kept the property full, and, and we we were luckily we took over a good resident base, and we almost uh, nobody I didn't have to to evict anybody through this, um, so it, it went pretty well, and then after the dust settled a bit, we started implementing our plan. Now, in this particular asset, did, did you have to do some interior renovations, or was this thing pretty much ready to go when you bought it? Uh, it was. It, we sold it as a yield play, which is you know, it was pretty much ready to go. Um, 
and the exterior was fine. We, we made, had some HVAC AC uh, replacement that we budgeted in, and then um, just standard unit turns. There wasn't anything special we did around them. We painted them and replaced the carpet and fixed the blinds and stuff, and, and, and rented them just fine. That's all we ever really did. So it was, it was closer to a yield play when you picked it up then, huh? It was a yield play. That's how we sold it, yeah. Okay. So how did how did you make money on that deal? I mean, if everything's just plugging away and you're not able to raise rents, how how did you make money? Uh, well, at the beginning, uh, we, uh, we, we didn't cash flow like a crazy amount. Uh, and we were just trying to keep, uh, we are just trying to let this period pass, right? Um, but then a year in, we, we started raising the rents uh you know, up to market rate. If somebody had moved out during COVID, we replaced them with somebody with a higher rent. Um, but no, we raised the rents, uh, you know, the second 12 months as fast as we could. Um, and, and in general, we, we were planning on holding the property for five years. But two years in, I said, we've hit our five-year uh, projection for two years. I think it might be time to sell now. Wow, wait a minute. Hold on, slow down. So you 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 achieved a five year goal in two years during a pandemic? Yeah, it was actually uh for some reason it was it worked out well for apartment owning. So so what kind of rate of return did you achieve at that two year mark? What caused you to sell? So I wanted the returns for one. We also had, had um about that time we purchased another apartment, a forty two unit. So uh I had, I had personal reasons to want to like not have a, a property an hour and a half away. Um, and I looked at it and I said, well, what can I sell it for? And uh, we were able to get it under contract uh, to where we'd make an 86% return in 27 months. Uh, that's a 38% annualized return. Wow. So 87%. So let's let's frame this for the audience, shall we? If, if somebody put $100,000 into that deal, you essentially gave them back their $100,000, plus you gave them an additional $87,000 in profits over a 27-month period? Yeah, approximately that, yeah. I, I kind of I call that pretty close to a home run. What, do you, what would you call it? I thought it was a home run, and, and, and I didn't think I'd have any trouble selling it because you have to get approval from the investors. I didn't think we're having any problem selling it. And actually, when it, when, you, when we got the approval to sell it, it, I projected way longer than that. But then when we ended up, it ended up at 86%. Well, that's 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 a wonderful result. So then you you had bought a forty two unit apartment community. Why why did you get a bigger asset for your second property? So yeah, the sixteen uh, it was was fun and all, but it was very time consuming. Um, you know, I, I I subbed out all the trades. You know, painting, plumbing, elect, electrical work, things like that, HVAC. Um, but as far as leasing and tenant relations, uh, that was all me. I did it all. Uh, so 16 unit, a lot of work, uh, 42 unit. And I would have bought a bigger one than 16, but I just didn't have the personal capability to do it at that time. So we, we went up to the next level that we could do, um, which was 42 units. Um, and that, in that case, we could afford a full-time maintenance person, um, and maybe a part-time manager. You are on track. You're doing extremely well. You've, you've, you've already made a, a sizable return a lot faster than expectations on your first uh, lead deal. You've got this 42 unit that we're going to talk about in a second here that, that's going really well. You're looking for your next potential asset, which is going to be 100 units, which is going to be like twice as big as what you've got. So you are scaling up. Talk to me about the advantages of scaling up when it comes to investing in real estate assets? Uh, well, for one, uh, they're much more stable. So, you know, in a 16 unit, if by chance two or three people move out, you're, you're like below 80% occupancy. Uh, if that happens on a 42, you know, you're still, you're still solid. Um, and, and, the, and the higher the unit counts, the more stable it's going to be, the more your, in, your, uh, your net, net operating income is going to be more stable. Um, so that's one good thing. And then uh, your ability to uh, to hire people to work for you. Um, 16 unit, very time consuming. 42 units probably in the middle. We're like, yeah, it's just big enough you know, to have somebody, but not big enough to have full staff. So my goal is to have a full staff on the next property uh, so that I can get out of the day-to-day stuff and start working on the business and sit in the business. And we can we can work on the asset at a, at a bigger picture and just make sure that uh, that everything is improving. 
on a day-to-day basis. So what kind of returns are you trying to create in this 42-unit apartment community? Uh, I mean, uh, 20% annualized is kind of our goal over over a long period of time. Uh, we have a 10-year loan on it. I don't know that we want to keep it for that long. We might uh, try to buy another asset right next to it, and uh, then we can hold it for longer. But, uh, yeah, we try to get 20% a year. 20% per, per year. Now, people listening to us that have their money in the stock market, they're, they're not making 20% per year. But you, that just kind of rolled off your tongue like, yeah, we're just, we're just doing 20% per year, no big deal, easy peasy. I mean, is it really that easy peasy? Uh, it, 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 I think Dale said this, you know, it's a real estate's like a freight train. Uh, it, it goes, it goes at a very steady pace, you know, um, and at a high return, 20%. The uh, stock market goes crazy everywhere. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's that hard to get 20%. Yeah, I'd agree with you. I mean, my, the results I'm getting in my investments are, are, at that level or better. So and I'm not bragging. I'm just and I'm a passive investor. So I don't do anything. I mean, I just analyze the deal. I, I make the relationship with the lead investor like you. If you decide that I should be in the deal, then I go into the deal and then you do all the heavy lifting and I make a good portion of the money and I'm totally fine with it. Are you totally fine with me as a passive investor doing nothing? I, yeah, I like. I, I don't want you to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have too many people making decisions. You just need one person making decisions. Or it gets pretty hectic. Yeah, what, what does Dell call something with multiple heads? He calls it a serpent, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's better to deal with one head than multiple heads, right? At least in all the mythological stories that I've heard, multiple heads are a bad news situation. Yeah. Yeah. So, so talk to me about the future. Where where are you going, and what are your goals for the future? And specifically, what are you focusing on to improve your lifestyle? Yeah, so first off, we, we, we're trying to uh, retire my wife, Angie, and uh, put the next property. And you know, technically, we'd probably stop there and, and, and reassess what we're doing. We'll probably buy two more properties and then just try to – to uh, optimize our lifestyle, make it simpler, easier, less uh, less stress, less risk. Um, I've thought about down the line maybe just having one apartment uh, that we own the whole thing um, and just keep that one. No investors, no nothing, and, and really de-stress our life, you know. Do the independent rental owner avenue and, and then go on yeah. vacation anytime you want, right? Go on. That is one thing I really want to do. I want to go on more vacations with my my daughters. I have two daughters, Isabel, six year old, uh, and Olivia, three years old. I want to take them out just like I did when I was a kid. You go skiing all the time, camping, all this stuff. Go to the beach. Uh, we'll have the time to do that. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Brandon, you're going to have a wonderful experience because you control 100% of your time. You're going to get your beautiful wife retired really quick here, and the two of you are going to spend a wonderful lifestyle raising two beautiful daughters where you're in control of what they learn, how they learn, and eventually they'll probably take over the business from you. Hey, look, Brandon got himself retired at the age of 33 just by doing what we tell people to do. You can do the same thing. Go to lifestylesunlimited.com, sign up for a free workshop, and let's get you going. The information and opinions you hear on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show are those of the host, guests, and callers. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.